So the Imre MS quotes the the the, the Kotzke Rebbe, Menachem Mendel Morgan. He says he says the following: Hishamrulachem alois behar unegoy bekatzeu. Be very careful. Hashem tells Klal Yisrael when they come to Har Sinai, He says, "Be careful to touch. Don't touch. Don't go up the mountain unegoya bekatzeu. Don't touch." The edge, even the edge of the mountain. Anyone who touches the mountain will die. That's the simple pshat. What I gave you is the pshat reading of it. Don't touch even the edge of the mountain. Don't go up the mountain. Don't even touch the edge. Anyone who goes up the mountain will die. The Kotzka read it completely differently. The Kotzka read it the following way. He says, Hapirish is the following. If you want to go up the mountain, don't just touch the edge. Hishamalachem. Be careful. You want to go up the mountain, Har Sinai? Don't touch the edge. If you're just touching the edge, that's pathetic. He says, you want to go up the mountain? He says the following. You've got to be prepared. You've got to be prepared to give your very life to go up the mountain. This is not shut, but this is beautiful. What he's saying here is, any time you want to go up Har Sinai, which is really any mitzvah, and which is any Talmud Torah, and which is chesed, and which is anything we're doing in life, which, as the Chovah Sabava says, anything could be a mitzvah depending on your kavana. Anything permitted could be a mitzvah depending on your kavana. I'm not going to get into the sugya of Avera Lishma. But, but certainly, um, but it can be a mitzvah. So if I am doing it, I have to immerse myself. That's what the Kotzka says. Hisham Elochem. Don't you dare just touch the edge of the mountain. If you're just touching the edge of the mountain, you're getting nothing. It's got to be a total investment. It has got to be complete investment. Right? That's what he says. You want to really touch the mountain? It's got to be to the extent of giving my entire life for that. And, and, and I think really the way to do that is through, is through this recognition of why I'm here is to do this. And a simcha. There's a very beautiful story they tell about the Sefer Kol Mavaser, right? about Rav Simcha Bunim Mabshischa, so, uh, Rebbe of the Kotzka. So, uh, he's walking along when he was, uh, he was working in um, Danzig. He was the CEO of a lumber plant in Danzig. It's before he became a pharmacist and before he became a Rebbe. Right? So, he's the CEO of a lumber plant. He's walking along on the banks of a river. And he's got a couple of Talmudian walking with him. And one of them slips in the mud and slides into the river. And none of them could swim. None of them could... Swimming was not big in 19th century Polish Hasidic life. Right, it just wasn't. Right. So uh, none of them could swim. So the guy's in the river and he's being carried along by the current. They're running along next to the river. No one knows what to do. Reb Simcha Bunim yells at him. And excuse my Yiddish, it's not very good. Reb Simcha Bunim yells at him. Lozmir grisem sim dem leviusim. Which means... Obviously my Yiddish is so bad, no one understood that. Right? Which means basically, give my regards to the Leviathan. That guy's drowning, and he says, give regards to the Leviusim. Right? I mean, this is not very helpful. You know, when you get down there, regards to Leviusim. Right? That's like saying someone's drowning, right? and you say regards to Nemo. Like, what? When they tell you in lifeguarding courses to throw someone a line, this is not what they mean. But what happened is, when he said this to the guy in the river, the guy smiled. He's drown- he smiled. And he actually started to thrash around a little more, and he was actually able to move himself around a little more so he got close enough to the bank so they could pull him out of the river. So his life was saved. So the Hasidim asked Rav Simcha Bunim, they said, what? what? What were you thinking? He said, Posuk says in Yeshaya, Ki Basimcha Seit Seyu. We usually translate that, you shall go forth with joy. He says, I translate it literally. Ki Basimcha, when you have Simcha, Seit Seyu, you can get out of anything. He says, all I saw that on this man's face was Yush. Despair. I saw in his face pessimism. I saw he'd given up hope. I figured if somehow I can inject a little bit of simcha in his mind, so one neuron will say to the other one, yeah, that was funny, and, you know, uh, and, and he'll say, oh, yeah. so it will change his demeanor and he'll save himself. He'll save himself. It's not me that saved him. Classic of simcha bunim. It wasn't me that saved him. He saves himself. And, and I believe this is also the way to get out of the distraction of dopamine. If we have simcha, which is the serotonin, we are in a state of contentment with what we're doing. And to understand 
that that's why we're here is really, really the focus. And that's going to give me the focus. And the truth of the matter is, it actually is a, a cycle, a fantastic cycle, not a cycle of destruction, but there's a cycle of construction. The more you understand that this is why I'm here, the more you are, the more you are happy with it. And the happier you are, the easier it is to focus on that experience. And the more you focus on the experience, the more of a flow experience it is. And the more of a flow experience it is, the more meaningful it will be, the more you'll want to repeat it, the more you'll be, in, uh, you'll be elevated by it. And consequently, it's a wonderful, fantastic flow experience. Simcha, and Simcha causing a flow experience. And so therefore, you can get out of it. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.